Rub up your engines! The Ford Fusion, they don't make them anymore, but this guy bought this one brand new. And it's got over 200,000 miles, original engine, original trendy. Let's check it out. We'll start with where are these things made? Well, they were all made in Mexico. Now, Ford's not really telling you that. You look inside the door, they're kind of sneaky. It just says, manufactured by Ford Motor Company. All of these were made in Mexico. Now, in terms of the quality of this car, I can't say anything bad. He's got over 200,000 miles, original engine, original tranny he did buy an extended warranty and he said he got thousands of dollars worth of stuff they even replaced his tires which kind of amazes me but some of these warranties you can get away with stuff but the basic car even though it's made in mexico it's held up pretty well here's the key fob he's had it replaced three times it was free under the warranty he got For some reason they can't make key fobs who knows maybe the mexicans don't understand wireless technology i don't know <laughs> but he got all these free he got tires he got all kinds of stuff now we look under the hood it's a four-cylinder turbo engine, even though it's got over 200,000 miles, it does not burn any oil. It's also the original transmission. He's never had the fluid change. I told him, don't. I agree, I wouldn't change it because it works good enough now. But this thing ran pretty good, even though it was made in Mexico. Why don't they make them anymore? Because Ford, if you don't know, doesn't make cars anymore. The only car they make is a Mustang sports car. Everything else is trucks and SUVs. The plant that was making these in Mexico now makes the Bronco Sport, and they sell the heck out of those things. It's strictly a money thing. They stopped making them because they said goodbye sedans. What it basically came down to was, I think they understood unconsciously that they couldn't compete with the Japanese. <laughs> I met a guy at Ford 30 years ago and he said, Scotty, I don't know how we're ever gonna compete with these Japanese. They make quality stuff and we've got all this planned obsolescence crap that breaks every four or five years. How can we compete with these people? Well, how do they do it? They don't, they don't make sedans anymore. The Japanese don't make lots of them, but the Americans don't because they couldn't compete, so they said, ah, we're gonna make a lot of money selling SUVs. Now, realize, this thing gets decent gas mileage. Now, this is an all-wheel drive vehicle with a turbocharger coming over here from Pennsylvania. You got like 29 miles a gallon, which is good for an all-wheel drive vehicle. You take the Broncos, they get horrible gas mileage <laughs> because they're high up in the air. Even their three-cylinder engine doesn't get that great gas mileage in the real world when you're driving around but people don't care. They're into SUVs, and the Broncos are real popular, so they stopped making A's, and the Bronco S is made in Mexico, and the regular Bronco is made in Michigan. So they're not making them because they're just not making sedans anymore. There wasn't anything particularly that bad about these vehicles. He added the wheels. He put these fancy wheels on last year. I think they look cool with that black, and originally they were just regular old silver ones. He got them so he can get decent price on the tires too. And if you notice, he had more problems coming here than I did when I drove through Pennsylvania, coming from Tennessee. I saw dead raccoons. Well, he ran into one, and there's a raccoon here that's stuck in his rim. There's something about raccoons in Pennsylvania that are suicidal with cars, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't hurt the car, other than it's got hair in there that's gonna have to be pulled out, but if you're ever driving through Pennsylvania, watch out for raccoons. Now, they're called Fusion for one big reason. It was a Fusion with Mazda. You know, Ford has always had stuff going on with Mazda. They sold Mazda pickup trucks as Fords. They sold Ford pickup trucks as Mazdas. Well. This whole thing is based on a Mazda chassis. That's why they call it Fusion. So in reality, these things actually ride a heck of a lot better than earlier Fords did because they have the Mazda Zoom Zoom technology in them, even though they were made in Mexico. 200,000 miles. Hey, it turns in still pretty good shape. It's got a CD player because it's older, but you know, got a nice sunroof in it. AC still works. Lots of room in the back seats. This is a fancy one, the Fusion Titanium EcoBoost all-wheel drive so we'll open up the old trunk and as you can see they're pretty deep and of course you can move things out of the way and have even more if you want it's kind of a classic american four-door it said ford decided americans didn't want these anymore just like they decided station wagons ah that's passe let's have suvs now they're making the suvs kind of look like station wagons of the future but they won't use the word station wagon now the guy obviously takes care of the car 200,000 miles plus and it doesn't burn any oil. These are good engines if you take care of them. Just understand, if you don't change the oil, the turbo's gonna go out. You know, they tell you, well, a turbo can last 100, 150,000 miles. Hey, this one's got 206,000. The turbo's still there, still works fine, hasn't been changed. 
things can last if you maintain them. If you're the type of person who does not maintain a car, do not buy a four or three cylinder turbocharged car because it'll blow up in front of your very eyes. I've seen some of the Fords, some of the Chevys, three and four cylinder engines, they'll blow at 50, 60,000 miles because the people didn't take care of them. This guy took care of it, hey, it's still running good. It's just Ford doesn't want to make cars anymore. And they decide we're gonna make profit making these SUVs. And of course, any fool knows the price of gas is gonna go up. It's a limited commodity, right? And as the politicians at B are gonna to try to electrify everything, you know, they'll start probably taxing gasoline even more, make it even more expensive. And then all these people are riding around in their SUVs that are getting 15, 14 miles a gallon in the real world, not the rated world, but the real world, they're gonna wonder, gee, why did I buy such a gas hog? Now we'll start it up. You can see it's a relatively space age for an old car. And we'll see, he said he had problems with the backup camera. Let's see if it acts up or not. Well, it's working now. He says sometimes it just flips itself upside down. And sometimes it just goes black. Don't expect a backup camera to last all that long. And as you can see, it's got 205,878 miles on it. And as you can see now, the camera just broke. <laughs> there it is. Camera is unavailable. Please contact your dealership. As usual, the rear view mirror still works perfectly fine, so who cares? You can't expect this stuff to last over time. Oh, that electronic crap is gonna break. That's just how it is. But on the plus side, the AC's still blowing freezing cold. And these seats, hey, they're real comfy. You know, rip stairs, but they're very comfortable seats. So I have to turn off the stupid electric parking brake. Even back then, they had electric parking brakes on them. We're backing it up, but the camera's not working, so we'll look at the mirror. It's relatively low to the ground, so we're going to go over this bump pretty slow. And as I said about the ride, here we go. We're going over this bumpy road here, and I got to say, as old as it is, it's still got a relatively smooth ride on these goofy Rhode Island roads that are full of holes and bumps. So let's see what this four cylinder turbo can do when we take off on the road. Oh wait, this Cadillac gets out of the way. And here we go, go for it. Well, it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> Little hesitation there. After all, it does have 206,000 miles on it. See what it does for passing gear when we floor it. Sure does a lot of hesitation, it's not running perfectly. It does have some severe turbo lag. The turbo is probably starting to wear out. We'll hit it again. Definite turbo lag. There, now it's kicking in. The turbo is starting to wear. You don't notice it when you accelerate gradually. See, it's perfectly fine, but when you floor it, you got that turbo lag. Well, it's old with over 206,000 miles on. You kind of expect to get a little turbo lag. Driving conservatively, it's still perfectly fine. Well, I guess now it's become a grandpa car. When you take off, you're just going to take off gradually and it runs perfectly fine. It's no longer a racing fusion. It's a grandpa fusion. Guess it fits in with me now. <laughs> so yes, it's still got the original turbo on it, but the original turbo is wearing out. <laughs> you might guess and put a new wastegate. That might fix it, but I mean generally when there's this many miles, the turbo is just going to be internally worn. So yeah, the turbo's worn and... The owner just said, hey, when do I ever go all the way to the floor? Anyways, he drives it conservatively. He was worried. He thought maybe the transmission was going up. But no, the transmission's in excellent shape. It's that the turbo has a real big lag because it's worn internally. But ah, he changes the oil all the time. It's not like it's going to seize up or anything. It's not making any sound. If you hear the turbo kicking in and you hear a lot of rattling, you want to change it sooner than later. You don't want pieces of the turbo blowing, but it's nowhere near that. It's just, they say 100, 150,000 out of these turbos. This has got 206. It's worn, but if you baby it, floor it part way, not the whole way. The truth about Ford Fusions. They were actually decent cars if you took care of them. They don't make them anymore. Everything wears out eventually, but for the money he paid, hey, he got his money's worth out of the car. He's not a race car driver, so he doesn't care about fixing the turbo. If you did, you're looking at a bunch of money. And then, of course, if you do replace the turbo, you got an engine with 206,000 miles with a new turbo that's going to go boom and probably boom. <laughs> so he's going to leave it the way it is. It's a nice car, rides nice, fun to drive around in. Hey, there wasn't anything particularly that bad about the Fusions, just that Ford's not making cars anymore, so that was the end of the Fusion, and here come the Bronco Sports, and all the problems they've had so far. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.